A little while back I bought this hexagon canvas. I found it in Flying Tiger and although I had no clue at the time what I would paint on it, I figured it would be good for when I was in a bit of an ideas lull. You know what I mean? Sometimes a really simple point of difference, like having an oddly shaped canvas to work with, can help you think of it differently. So let's go paint this thing. <laughs> I'll be honest, it took me a while to think what to paint. The hexagonness really did muddle my thinking for a bit there. I had ideas for subjects, but none of them seemed to fit the shape well. In the end, I settled on creating a design that could radiate from the centre to take advantage of the way the hexagon shape pushes your eye inwards and outwards. I noodled about with more regulated pattern ideas, but eventually I decided to paint a dahlia flower. I flippin' love a dahlia. I'm using gouache paints here and it was interesting for me because I've not gotten around to trying gouache on a canvas until now. I'd only done it on paper. I felt like these paints worked on it really well. I especially had a great time sloshing on the yellow background. The colour was so vibrant. I started in the centre so I had a focal point locked in and I had thought I would work my way outwards with the petals until I realised it actually made more sense to work from the outside in and then it was just a case of slowly layering the paint working on the many 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 petals round and round This rhythm of constantly moving the canvas around, working on each petal, layering the colours, changing my mind a million times. <laughs> well, it was easy to lose the sense of how much I had done and how far I still had to go. And it just highlighted to me that art, in general, is just like that. Art practice is circular, at least mine feels like it is. It has no end to it because it is always evolving. Every decision that is made, whether it's deemed a mistake or a stroke of genius later on, it's an experiment that keeps the learning moving along. We're only ever in the middle of it all and it never truly ends because there's always something new to know. And following this logic along, I like to think that because art is a cycle, failure doesn't actually exist within it. Yay! I looked up the definition of failure and the first entry said it was a lack of success and the succinctness of that feels like a full stop but the definition of success came out as the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose which implies to me that there is never a lack of success in art because just the act of doing it means we are accomplishing more skills, more knowledge and more experience. Sure, the results of our artistic experiments may come out a bit wonky sometimes, but that's not a failure, because they are not the end. They are middle of the story plot points, interesting twists and turns, which were unexpected but helpful to figure out. For me, this acts as a reminder that art practice should always have, at its core, some fizz of pure joy. It should be enjoyable to do because who wants to be doing something that never ends if it's just going to be miserable? 
I could have kept rotating and finessing this dahlia for a lot longer than I did, but I reckon this painting is as finished as it's going to be for now. I enjoyed my time with it, listening to an audiobook as I painted and letting the rhythm of the petals de-stress my mind. Is it a success? Sure it is! Not because it's perfect, I can see lots of things that are a bit squiffy, but because I did it. I made that. That's enough. If you got this far through the video, you are a shiny minority who are so very much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do consider hitting the like button. It really helps me out and I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.